If there was someone in your life who spoke to you the way you speak to yourself and in your own mind, would you be friends with that person? Really, really. Like consider the things that you say to yourself to try to modify your behavior. Say if you're trying to say, lose some weight or tone your body. If you've just started a workout plan, how do you modify your behavior? Are you doing it through self-criticism? Because that's what I used to do. That's what I used to do all the time. I would beat myself up. I was my biggest enemy. I was always judging myself. I was telling me that I was a loser, or that I would never be able to do it because, um, because change is hard. But then I had a realization. I had a realization. Have you ever been cuddling with somebody and like, cuddling someone where they've just, you felt so safe and so supported and so nurtured that you just like melted and that you softened. Has that ever happened to you? It's happened to me before. And that feels way better than the idea of like, I hate to go there, but I'm going, you can, you can try to beat a dog to get the dog to do what you want it to do. And the dog will probably get scared, be scared of you, but you know what it's also gonna do? Bite you back. It's gonna be vicious. And it's gonna be, it's not gonna be playing the game of true internal change. It's behavior change out of fear and it's not permanent. And the reality is, as many of us contemplate our behavioral changes, especially when it comes to our wellness journey in our bodies. We have some story in our minds that say that if I criticize myself enough, eventually I will modify the behavior and I will reach those goals. But I have to tell you something. It's bullshit. It's a lie that you're telling yourself. You're never going to be able to beat yourself into submission, but you can practice radical self-love in compassion to nurture yourself into having the desire to change because you feel loved, seen, and appreciated. So what do I mean by that? Pretend like you just told yourself that you were gonna start a wellness journey and you weren't gonna eat chips anymore. You love Doritos. You're not gonna eat Doritos anymore. But for some weird reason, which I don't recommend you have Doritos in the house, first mistake, okay? But you have Doritos in your house. And you tell yourself, oh, I'm not gonna eat those Doritos. And, and but you have one. And so then you like say, oh, I just ate these Doritos. I'm such a loser. I can't believe I did this. Oh, what the hell? And then what did you do? You just condemned yourself. You just judge yourself. And then you say, oh, what the hell? I'm just gonna eat the whole freaking bag. So you condemned yourself. You judged yourself and then it makes you resort to self-soothing behaviors. And those self-soothing behaviors are probably what got you into the place that you're in in the first place. Whether it be Doritos, whether it be wine, whether it be whatever vice isn't serving you in your life right now. You're going to turn back to it if you judge yourself for having a misstep. So what do we do? We practice radical self-love and compassion. We say to ourselves, if we, if we have a slip up, we pause, we take a deep breath. We hear the habits in our minds of the negative self-talk start to come up and we stop it. We take a deep breath and we tell ourselves, it's okay, you're human. We all make mistakes. You're gonna drink some water and you're gonna make a new choice tomorrow. We're gonna go for a walk. So change the tape in your mind because if all you do is self-criticize, you're gonna in eventually turn back to those self-soothing behaviors. I had someone tell me the other day though that when they started practicing self-acceptance that they kind of said what the hell to all of their self-care and 
workout goals that they had set because in their mind, self-acceptance means accepting themselves how they are, which that is true. Self-acceptance is accepting yourself how you are and loving yourself how you are. But loving yourself how you are doesn't mean that you negate looking at the reality of your current situation. And if the reality of your current situation is, is that you have a habit to eat dessert every night and you know that dessert that you eat every night causes a ring of belly fat and that belly fat doesn't make you feel good about yourself. But failure to believe that you have the ability to change is not radical self-love. That self-doubt. When we choose to nurture the behaviors that we know aren't ultimately serving us as humans, that's denial. So it's about finding this delicate balance between self-compassion, self-love, self-acceptance, and belief that you are worthy and have the ability to seek the next level in your life. Because farmers say you're either green and growing or dead and dying. So if you choose to live by this is just the way that I am, you're making the choice that you're no longer evolving. And if you're no longer evolving, you're dead and dying. So my question for you is, what path are you on? Radical self-love is about loving yourself, accepting yourself for who you are, where you've been, and where you are right now, and simultaneously believing that you are worthy to take time to love, care for, and nurture. Radical self-love includes telling the truth to yourself. We are what we eat. And if you know your nutrition is not where it needs to be for you to thrive as a human, accepting that is not radical self-love. Not beating yourself up about it is radical self-love. But having the courage and having the belief in yourself to attempt to care for and nurture yourself better, well, that's growth, my friends. That's a wellness journey.